Hey, book readers. Today we're going over a short and sweet recap of Fourth Wing so that you're ready for Iron Flame this Tuesday. We're just gonna go over some of the main plot points, some key factors that you need to remember, some of the characters you may have forgotten, and catch you up on everything so you don't have to reread the entire book for the next one. Fourth Wing is set in the Kingdom of Navarre. This is a story of cadets that go into Bizgayath War College. There are four quadrants that you can choose from. You can go to the Infantry Quadrant, the Healers Quadrant, the Scribes Quadrant, and the Writers Quadrant. Most of this book is in the Writers Quadrant. Part of my videos did not transfer whenever I tried to download them, so I'm refilming a few. That's why I look different. But let's go through some of the characters so you don't forget who they are. Violet Sorengale is our main character. Everybody remembers her. Zayden is our male main character. He's 23. He's a wing leader. He is bonded with Sigale, which is the dragon who is mated to Violet's dragon, which is Tarn. Violet's mother is a general in the military. Mira Sorengale is Violet's sister. She's a dragon rider. Brennan Sorengale is Violet's brother and we were led to believe that he died in the Battle of Arisha with the Rebellion and that he was killed by Zayden's father. But then, of course, at the end of our book, we see that he is still alive and he is a mender and he's the mender who saved Violet at the end of book one. And so now we found out he's part of the revolution and he's going to be a character going forward. General Melgren is the commanding general of all of Navarre. Melgren is the one who has the power to see the outcomes of things and he cannot see the outcome when more than three of the children of the Rebellion writers are together. Something to do with the relics or something. We don't know much. We just know when there's three of the rebellion together, Melgren can't see the outcome, can't see the future of what's going to happen. He is the one who executed the rebellion leaders and his dragon is the one who created the rebellion relics on the marked ones, which are the children of the rebellion leaders. Finn Ryerson was Zayden's father and he was the leader of the Tyrish uprising. He was executed after he lost at the Battle of Arisha and then the leadership has now led every Everyone to believe that he was a madman with conspiracy theories. Rhiannon is Violet's friend that she met walking up the stairs to the parapet the very first inscription day and she's Violet's friend throughout the book. Some more names of friends, there's Sawyer and Riddick are friends with them. Jack Barlow was Violet's nemesis who she killed that first time that her lightning appeared. Imogene is another cadet who is a child of the rebellion. Liam was also a child of the rebellion and he was Zayden's foster brother and Violet's bodyguard died at the end of book one. Garrick is one of Zayden's closest friends. Bodhi is Zayden's cousin. And then one that I had forgotten, Sloane, which is Liam's sister. If you are like me, when Rebecca Yaros posted that excerpt from Iron Flame and it was Sloane, I was like, who is Sloane? Sloane is Liam's sister who on his deathbed, he asked Violet to help when she comes to the writer's quadrant. We will see what happens with her. Colonel Atos is Dane's father and a close advisor to Violet's mother. We can't leave out Dane. Dane Atos is Violet's childhood friend and she had maybe a crush on and then she comes here she thinks she might like him she kisses him and there's no chemistry and then she comes to find out he really cares more about following the rules than he does about Violet in particular something that will probably show up in the next book is in the end the final scene of fourth wing when Liam dies and there's the whole fight with the venom this happened because Dane read Violet's memories without her permission he touched her and he had the memory of Zayden telling her that Zayden and Bodhi had gone to this outpost outside of the war. So Dane took that memory from her and used it, told his dad or whoever was in charge. And they set up this war game challenge of sending all these rebellion leaders' kids to this outpost outside of the wards, basically for them to die. And Violet got sent with them. I'm sure that will come up again with Dane. A couple of things I also wanted to remember. The last time Taren bonded was to the writer who died saving Brennan in the Battle of Arisha. So he is the one talked about as burning out because he used too much of his magic to save Brennan. Some things that you're gonna wanna know. The writers bond with a dragon so that they have access to magic because they cannot access magic unless they bond with a dragon. So once they bond with the dragon, then the dragon gives them the ability to channel magic when the dragon feels they're ready. And this channeling is just like regular old magic that everybody wants, like the ability to use magic to turn on lights and all kinds of random stuff. And then their personal signet power is the power that they have that reflects who they are at their core. So each person has a different signet power. The book says that they've always had that, but then the dragon fuels it and it's just been waiting for the fuel from the dragon. Also, they have to be careful when they're using their magic because they can burn out if they use 
too much, too long, too far, they get burnt out and they can die. So that is what is said to have happened of the writer who saved Brennan. Like we thought Brennan had died and they said this writer was trying to save Brennan and burned out, killed himself. And so I'm pretty sure we're gonna find out. He burned out and used went too far, but Brennan did survive because he did that. And then Andarna was a feather-tailed dragon, which we found out was a hatchling, that she was just a couple of years old. And this is a big secret that the dragons keep that they don't want people to know because until they're grown, dragons can't bond. And so they can gift their magic, but they have no control over their bonding. And so if they gift it, then the human can drain them and burn out the dragon. And so they never have bonded before Andarna. That's why it was scary at the end when Andarna was using all this power to freeze time and save Violet and kill the Venom. Um, we were afraid Andarna was going to burn out, but she did not. And we're going to see what happens to her. But I'm afraid that Dane got that information from Violet when he touched her unwillingly. That now he knows that. And what are they going to do with that information? We don't know. The Book of Fables is like the book that Violet's dad always read to her growing up. And she never really thought it was anything. She just thought it was like bedtime stories to scare children about the dangers of having too much power. And like Venon were just monsters that were scary. But turns out that it's true. Remember, he had left her a letter in the binding of the Book of Fables that she found that says, basically, remember that folklore is history passed down and that it only takes one generation to erase that history and to change it and he says I know you'll make the right choice when the time comes you're the best of your mother and I and she was like what is this like she just thought it was an analogy like maybe somebody in leadership has too much power but come to find out it's literal that the venom are real and all of these things in these stories really happened. Everyone in Navarre and Violet was lied to their whole lives, were given an incorrect history, but the venom are real and they are outside of the borders of Navarre. The reason that the kingdom does not want the people to know is because the only thing that kills the venom is the same thing that is keeping up their wards. And so if they can keep their wards up, they're safe because the venom can't come in. The wards keep out all magic except for dragon magic. Zayden and the people of the rebellion were taking that material, it's like an alloy or something, and putting it in weapons and giving it to the griffin flyers to try and help protect the innocent villages who are being attacked by venom. So Violet comes to find out all this is real. She realizes her kingdom has been lying to them just because they're selfish and they want to survive and letting all those innocent people die. So now she's in on the revolution. She wants to help save these innocent people and fight the venom, but she has lost trust in Zayden. And she told him that at the end, like I'm in, but I don't trust you anymore. And I can't be with you. And he says at the end, he's like, well, I'm not going to let you go. Like I'm going to fight for you. So we're like, let's see where, where this goes. That's what happened with the venom. And don't forget that Zayden and Violet can talk to each other inside their minds, just like they can talk to their dragon because their dragons are mated and bonded. Then they can talk to each other. All four of them can talk to each other. We'll see how that plays out. And then about the fables, the book of fables that her dad told her, it gave us the history. So basically it said that there was an ancient kingdom that spanned ocean to ocean, that there was great war among three brothers who fought to control the magic in the land. There were stories of the first writers who tried to bond with dragons, stories how the bonds can turn on the writer if they try to consume too much power. There was talk of a great evil that spread across the land. As man became corrupted by dark magic, they turned into creatures called venom. And then those creatures created flocks of winged creatures called wyverns and wyvern are different from dragons because they have two legs instead of four legs. And the wyvern scourged the land of all magic in their thirst for more power, the wyvern and the venom. There are stories about the dangers of wielding power from the ground instead of the skies, as one could easily start drawing magic from the earth could be driven mad, which is what happens to the venom. They're drawing magic directly from the earth instead of being bonded to a dragon from the skies. I think that's what it means. Basically, that's what the stories of fables were told. They thought it was stories, but it's actually true history. Also remember that in their fight that they learned if they killed the venom who created the wyverns, that it would kill all of those wyverns. They did not have to fight every single wyvern if they could kill the venom that created it, but venom are very hard to kill and they can only be killed with these special weapons that have this special alloy or something. Then in this fight, we also learned that they can be killed by Violet's lightning. She paused time to be able to direct the lightning to the venom, redid time and struck him with lightning and he died. So now that 
uh, and Darna doesn't have that, we don't know, but we know that she can kill them with her lightning. So I think that will be important also. We also got one chapter of Zayden's POV. So will we get more in the next book? I am guessing yes. I'm betting she's going to separate them because he's going to be graduating and they're going to send him somewhere else and she's going to be at the war college still. I'm betting we're going to get alternating POVs, but we'll see. I don't actually know. <laughs> the short and sweet summary of what you need to know before going into Iron Flame. Basically, that people of Navarre have been lied to about the reality of Venon and Wyverns. They were made to believe they were story tales, but they are real. The kingdom is protected by wards from these Venon and Wyvern because only dragon magic can enter their wards. And the things that they're using to power their wards is what they can also use to kill Venon. So they don't want to tell people that the Venon exist because they don't want to share the thing that's keeping them safe. So in return, they're leaving all of those innocent people to die. It's been going on for at least 400 years up to their 600 year history that they slowly have rewritten the truth to save themselves. So Violet's dad tried to warn her about this using the Book of Fables. Uh, maybe we'll get more about him. We didn't get a lot. So far, all we know is that he was a scribe and that his heart gave out after they lost Brennan. So I feel like like there needs to be something else, but maybe not. The people of the rebellion knew this, knew all of this about the Venon and the Wyvern, and they were trying to out the Navarian kingdom that they were lying about it. And they were all murdered. And then their children were forced to attempt to be writers in the writer's quadrant. And Zayden and some of the rebel children have been helping aid the Griffin Flyers by supplying them with weapons that include that thing that kills the Venon. Also, Violet's brother Brennan is alive and part of the revolution. And now Violet herself is also part of the revolution. So book one was basically Violet proving herself as a worthy writer, learning how to channel magic, fighting on her dragon, um, learning that she's one of the most strongest writers that there ever has been. There was lots of drama between cadets and like tension with her and Zayden to where then they were finally together, but then he lied to her. So now she doesn't want to be with him anymore because he broke her trust, but he's not going to let her go. So it's drama, 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 drama. Don't forget her good old pal Dane. Something's going to happen with him because when we left off there, it was of his betrayal of taking her memories without her consent and setting them up at this outpost to die at the final war game challenge where Liam did die. That's where we left off. That's where we're going to jump in into Iron Flame and see what happens. I was shocked to find out that we were getting book two within the same year. That's very rare. So I'm wondering how many she has already finished and ready to publish if they wanted to get them out quicker than say Sarah J Maas. We'll see what happens in Iron Flame. Subscribe if you want to follow along and talk more books because books make life better.